let me now introduce you to my guest to have this discussion this morning. And we will be looking at the very unfortunate murder of a member of parliament. And as you know, we all got up yesterday taken by such, you know, surprise and very, very bad news. This morning, Abdul Malik Kukubako, editor-in-chief of the New Crusading Guide newspaper, joins us in the studio. He's a regular panelist. And Professor Kwesi Enin, who is director, Faculty of Academic Affairs and Research, Kofi Annan International Peacekeeping Training Center, will tell us whether or not the shooting and killing of the Infantman MP is an opportunity to begin to talk about the matter of providing security for the MPs. There are some who have always kicked against that. Will people change their mind now that MPs are being killed and the MPs tell us that they are becoming afraid, they are scared for their life. This time it is Echo Kwanza Hayford, the MP for Infantman, who was, you know, shot and killed in circumstances that people are trying to make sense of. Now, let's listen to the regional police PR and then uh, also this uh, footage about we have put together about the NP. October 2020. Now, about an 11:40 day. Na police in Eleven forty PM. The Mankesim Divisional Police Command had an information that there was a robbery going on on an ostrich between Dominace and then Mankesim. That is the uh, the highway from Mankesim to Kumasi. So police proceeded to the scene and met a lot of passengers with cars parked who narrated that they were attacked by robbers at the scene. We also had the information and that the MP for Infanciman, that is Honorable Eko Kwanza, was also a victim in that robbery and he was shot dead. Currently, the body is at the morgue for uh, preservation and also autopsy. Again, uh, persons who were injured have been sent to the hospital, and for now we can confirm that it's only the MP who has passed on. All other injured are at the hospital. We are appealing to the general public that, as we all know, police will move with information. Anybody who have information about this incident concerning the perpetrators involved, we are appealing to them to liaise with the nearest police station. Give us the information that will help to uh, facilitate our investigations. Again, currently the regional police command has instructed and also taken over investigations from Angesim Divisional Headquarters and investigations will be carried on at the regional CID. So the case is still under investigation. And for him to die the way that he did should clearly call attention to the need for maximum security for politically exposed persons, particularly members of parliament. The way it stands now, if you are in the executive or you are in the judiciary, you have access to state-provided security. But those of us who are not, we are left on our own. And I think it is becoming one too many. I think it is about time that we as a people make the commitment to ensure that those that we select to lead us are also given the needed protection. Because without this, it is going to make it very difficult for more people with the right competencies and abilities to step up. Oh, I'm even short of words. I don't even know the type of words that to use. It is quite, it's quite um, very discouraging to even some of us who uh, voluntarily put ourselves up 
as, uh, as, as citizens of Ghana to lead our various constituencies in, in the country. Uh, when you look at the spate of insecurity in the country these days, just about a month now, it, it's, it's becoming uh, scary and everybody is being scared of the life. So you'll be there and then your family will call you, hey, be careful, be careful, do this, do this. As if uh, we are now living in a, 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 a a situation or a community or environment where if care is not taken, things will go uncontrollably. We as members of parliament also need security. It is important. We pass the laws that are putting restrictions on movement and the work of criminals. So we are always the target of the criminals. So why are you giving the judge the police because he passed the judgment? Why are you giving the minister, the deputy minister, the security to protect themselves. But those of us who sit and pass the laws before the laws are sent to the judicial service for implementation are rather not being protected. The level of insecurity in Ghana now cannot be again said. We lived in a country where people can have the courage to walk into a court and attack a sitting judge and yet go scot free. We live in a country where a sitting MP, J.B. Dankwaidu, was murdered in a cold blood. We live in a country where a professor was killed. We live in a country where MP was announced to have been killed in a very tragic circumstances. Change and say it to a crab around by seven thirty seven forty five. Our car, then the above was it. It's the Yaba the branch of Mancasim road to be at the it's excellent in another than Quadro. Aye, the road no more as soon or my beam, it's no as a quinum. The Yaba, the bit of Domrace, Domrace, I won't fancy. Hello. But you yet you. I hope baby the dumb man say. I hope over phone was sane. And the answer my baby China for me. Oh my baby, I'm not be born with you. Oh my, 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 Mankasim, I said, Obia, I call the Abao was no. To whom he says, I'll start ten years or sudden in the chair, Mankasim back. To one, say a two Akasa, away, your carnage. Pay, pay, pay more than bear three, four times. Another one catches a arm robbery. You see, the air of Carmunginano, Obia, sir, you, Obia, Siki, see, then your bomb fire, sir, about the moyer now. And see now, Mokani, the MP, the car, the chia, na ne kakas na e tu kwa ineho. The car no ni MP car ne chi. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Say the number one nuswa yeko. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try take it from Obuasi to. Eh, I'm akre to Obuasi. Okay. And see, yeah, as I copy Adriano so. Aha. And see now, like cars not parked, parked. If you move traffic, you know, I block it, you know. You move the across it. One way fast and not ten years. Okay, because that I know your boss driver into a new road. No, so all right. So, um, you've heard uh, some MPs uh, speak. The, first, the police, uh, regional police PRO, uh, speak about it uh, as to what they know and what is being done. As you know, that uh, some experts have been sent there from Accra to take over the investigations and ensure that things are done quite swiftly. Uh, it sounds a very normal, you know, uh, refrain that when some important person, quote unquote, uh, is killed in these ways, we get these announcements. But the question is, what has been the result? So, and then an amount of 20,000 CDs reward uh, has been put up, uh, awaiting anybody who will give information that will lead to the arrest of those 
um, involved. And then you had MPs uh, telling us about how they feel afraid and, uh, and some of them also uh, doing the usual politics with the situation. And then we had the uh, narration from this individual who says, who sort of witnessed uh, what was going on uh, in that interview with Mama Vio Uswabwaji in Chi, and uh, summarily rendered, he was simply saying that they were behind them somewhat, and so uh, saw that uh, on this particular road, there had been a road block mounted, and it was discovered that uh, armed robbers were the ones operating at the place and had mounted the road block. And so the driver took a decision to turn back. And when he turned, uh, the things didn't work. So if eventually, this is what happened. The accounts we have heard uh, is simply that the armed robbers now moved to them, to their car, and the NP identified himself. After identifying himself, the one who shot said, you guys are the ones who are making things difficult for us in this country, and then just shot him. So that's what happened. Let's listen to the Speaker of Parliament, and then we'll do the discussion. by the law enforcement agencies to apprehend quickly the perpetrators of this heinous crime. I want to reassure you further that government will continue to take and intensify all appropriate measures to guarantee the safety of members and citizens of our country as we all go about our lawful duties especially during this period of democratic accountability. May God bless the members of Parliament and us all. And may God bless our homeland, Ghana, and make her great and strong. Nana Adu Dankwa. Our past with all 375 CNS through. Probably God has accepted your prayer. That is why we've not had any natural incident. But this unnatural murder of a member of parliament, it happened to J.B. Dankwa. The perpetrators have not been identified. They have not been punished. But Mr. Speaker, it, lay, it raised an issue that members of parliament, we are our own enemies. There is public distrust. Sometimes there is even public outrage. We have suffered physical attacks, we suffered verbal attacks, but not deadly attacks, not one that results in death. You can say you are not happy with the way we are contributing to your welfare, but once he loses their life, that's it. What more can he do? But Mr. Speaker, the public, when we engage them, they will say that members of parliament, yes, we are not asking for, we are asking for the safety and security of every Ghanaian. We are only additionally asking that given the risk of the job we do, we are given self-protection and personal protection. That must be done by the Inspector General of Police and the Minister for Interior. Mr. Speaker, we control their affairs. If they refuse to provide for it, there will be an appropriation bill into next year. We will do what is appropriate, needfully, and lawfully, because our lives matter, and lives of members of parliament matter. I'm respectfully as the directing that the Honorable Minister for Interior should appear in this Honorable House on Tuesday to assure the safety of Honorable Members, particularly with reference to those words which apparently provoked this dastardly act. The Honorable Minister is hereby invited 
to come, make explanation, give assurances for the protection of honorable members, so that honorable members may advise themselves as they think fit in all the circumstances. Right, so you had the Right Honourable Speaker of Parliament and then the Minority Leader, Haruna Idrisu. So, Koku, this is where we come and the way Mr. Hayford was killed, we are, we are thrown back to a discussion that we have ritually when these matters uh, come up. On Tuesday, the 9th of uh, February 2016, J.B. Dankwe woke up in the morning, and that's what we're told. The very promising MP was killed in his house. We went through this discussion. We are back at it. What do you say? <sighs> First of all, my condolences to the family and uh, the party mm. that he belongs to, uh, parliament, and of course all of us. Uh, losing a legislator is a loss to the entire nation, not just his constituents. Right. And one would have wished that we didn't come back to discuss this subject matter within the same context, in the t sense of the murder of uh, Mr. Hayford. Mm. But here we are. I recall vividly when the J.B. Dankwa thing happened. We were here. Yeah. We subjected it to some interrogation. Mm. And uh, Parliament also did. Indeed, they suspended par parliamentary session for a while. And then the day they resumed, uh, it was a subject matter like mm. we've just seen. Yeah. Aruna Drusu, Chairman Sambonsu, all of them uh, making statements and calling for protection some security protection for members of the legislature. And you know that's a very unpopular uh, request but or demand. Yeah. Anytime it happens, it's like the Gracia thing. Mm -hmm. uh, once you throw it out into the public domain or on the streets, members of parliament lose. But here we are back again to deal with the same issue where a life of a legislature has been terminated. See, uh, this is the second time in terms of fatalities, as long as my memory serves me right. I may be wrong, under the Fourth Republic. I recall J.B. Dankwa and then this incident. But there have also been incidents where members of parliament were attacked. Right. For instance, uh, one Mr. Joseph Kujo Furi, I think 29th October 2013, this is a GNA report. Mm. He was attacked in his residence, Tama Community 18, by armed robbers. There was a time in 2006, August 2006, when Asabi, Asamoah Boatin, mm. and uh, Osei Ajayi, they were ministers, but they were also members of parliament. They were also attacked by armed robbers in the Kumasi. I think it was Osei Ajayi's residence. And each time these things happen, the issue of security protection for members of the legislature mm. comes up. But then there's a the counter. The there's counter even is... a more recent one, uh, the MP for Inshaeso, Kennedy Kwesi, yes. uh, yes. uh, can come. Yes. He says in 2019, he and his family were held for almost three hours yes. by armed robbers. Yes, and I'm sure there are many others we forgot right. momentarily, but mm. I believe so. You know, uh, but any time that issue comes up, and the request or demand for security protection comes up, there's a counter. And the counter doesn't come from just the ordinary people, incidentally. Mm. There are also security analysts who raise issues. For instance, there's an example here. We can't give MPs police protection. So what? This is a security analyst, Mr. Emmanuel so so what he has rejected suggestions of providing personal police protection for parliamentarians in the country. Mm. He was reacting, of course, to what members of parliament had been saying. I think Chairman Minsan, in the wake of Mwache Dankwe Du's death. Mm. His point was that there are 275. It's extremely difficult 
if not impossible, from the financial point of view, to undertake that kind of exercise. Uh, you had a situation where one other MP, his view was that, well, if you cannot protect us, he says, buy guns for your protection. A 40 go to MPs. A very desperate one. Mm -hmm. Not exactly wrong if it's licensed and all that yes. for your protection at home, self defense, and all that. But this from was coming. You and I know almost all of them, almost all of them have licensed guns. Yes, yes. But it's not sufficient defense. That's right. Especially if you are enclosed with your family and all those to engage in any gun battle with armed robbers, you know, very determined ones. So we have a, a, an issue to tackle. What form should the security protection take? See, we have the institutional security. For instance, parliament, there's now a police post there. And I'm sure they may have CCTV and all those things installed. That's right. So in terms of the corporate body, parliament, the institutional security, I think we are doing something about it and going, progressing. There's also, you know, the residential security. I may be using wrong Ways. The analyst, security analyst may have a better description. But when I say security, uh, residential security, I'm talking of the domestic, them being at home. Mm. Don't forget, we don't have a parliamentary village. Right. Something we used to have mm. earlier in the mm. first phase of a uh, Fourth Republic Parliament. Right. But we sold them out mm. to some, some of them, even to the MPs themselves. That's right. Yes. And so they are not in a gated community where we can have a certain corporate approach towards providing residential security. They live in different areas. Yeah. Most all of them in Accra, of course, they are, when they go to their constituents, they'll come there too. Mm. But they're here and they are scattered. So there's a challenge as to how it can be done. But of course, there are solutions. Mobile police patrols, constant ones here and there could help. When the armed robbers know that this, there is this mobility and visibility of the security agencies in these areas, uh, they can be, it's a, it's a, it serves as a certain deterrent. That's right. I'm not talking absolute mm. terms, mm. but it could help. You know, so the residential security element is a bit challenging, but it is not impossible to operationalize, in my candid opinion. A more difficult one, and it's related to election security, is the campaign security. It's a soft set. Mm. This is a classic case where the member of parliament has gone out to do campaign with his uh, colleagues, the timing of the campaign, all those things are important. How do you go about that? I know the presidential and run uh, vice presidential candidates are giving some sort of support yeah. over a period. Mm. They embed security and police forces in those campaign teams. I'm not sure. Once the Electoral Co Commission confirms that you are a candidate. Exactly. So, like they announced yesterday, all these 17 uh, potential presidential candidates, once they are cleared that they are candidates, the state will go to their aid by providing them security. Exactly. I'm not sure that is done for members of parliament mm. or parliamentary candidates. But campaign security, how do we formulate it? What kind of format? The campaigner himself ought to have some protective ideas, some ideas. Mm. And this is where, this is a tricky area. You are not careful, you may be... So those of, those of you watching on television, what you are seeing is the MP's vehicle. Wow. Uh, with blood all over it. That's the MP's vehicle. So he was shot while he was in the vehicle. Yes. So as you can see, in the vehicle, you see in, in the seats. Then oh. you see blood all over the seats. And then... Uh, by by the by the door as well uh looks like even both doors you have blood all over them right you know honestly mm. i didn't know and and look at the tire it's been shot several times you you see bullet holes in the car tire yeah very clearly wow i mm. i thought I, because one eyewitness account and i mm. think i heard it on joy mm. i thought this, he was supposed to have come out of the vehicle and introduced himself that's what but that's yes, appears, that's the account we're giving yeah but this one it appears he was yeah. in the car when mm. he, he was first shot whatever it is and was also in a party mm. car interesting okay so uh let's let's just take this narration again yeah. and give perspective to what we are seeing on television once again let's let's listen to this so immediately the mp arrived he didn't know what has happened so he arrived by the driver and asked him what is happening and when he saw that 
He went into it this year. So when the that time the MP had been hit because he was shot from the driver's side. So the driver was hit in the two hands. So he lost control of the vehicle and he went to it this year. So the MP got down and limping. He wanted to enter the bush and they shot him from the back at the waist level and he fell here. So he, he, he arrived here and so he was breathing here and this is where he fell. So this is the blood. So he fell here and uh, unfortunately bled to death. So that was exactly what happened. This was his last place? Yes, here. This very place. Mm. But when we came, the blood stain was there. Plenty. It is only this rain that is washing it away. So that was what happened. Uh, so your point is that you had a number of vehicles? Yes, that time about 18 cars have been stopped here. You got the robbers stop those cars. The one you were uh, robbers in front of the car that has been used to block and robbers at the back as well. Yes, they were six in number. So some here, some so here. somewhere right here, in, somewhere in the middle, and somewhere at the far corner where our car with the serene and other thing. Yes. So that was how they positioned you themselves. Saying when the outrider, yes, the MPs outrider, yes. Came all the way, the MP also followed him. Yes, but he was leading. Mm. So by the time the MP appeared at that place, the rabbit has marched the guy up to the middle there. Okay. So when MP arrived there, the, the rider was standing, one of the rabbits was behind him with a gun. Okay. So when the MP asked, Ah, rider, what is happening? What is happening? The guy was afraid, he couldn't talk. And so MP turned around, so then he said, driver, drive through. So he decided to meander his way up to this level, and he was shot here. So they were firing from all angles. So when you, we, we go to the car, you will see pellets holes everywhere on the car. But the one that got him first was shot from the driver's side. So he hit the driver in the two hands on the seat. So he lost control and it hit the MP. But when we checked, we saw that from where the, 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 the MP side, he was also hit because there were several shots there. So he got down here, wanted to enter the bush. Then they shot him and he fell here. And, uh, Dick, how did you get there? But when we arrived, they have moved it there, so I want to believe it was the people who the, up the sympathizers or party members who came to the scene, move it there. But otherwise, it was uh, immobilized here? Yes. In fact, we could have met it just here. Okay. Okay. All right, Koku. So, wow. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Ah, so tragic, huh? <laughs> Yeah, so that, but that, I think I was on the question of campaign security. Right. Uh, which, this is a classic you, example. You were asking whether you were, you were not sure if MPs are giving that sort of security that is given to the presidential candidates. Yes, I, I, I have my know, doubts. We that's know for the, a fact that they don't give yes, it. Uh -huh. Yes, I believe so. Right. So what does the MP or the parliamentary candidate do? What, what, what should you do in, in terms of protecting yourself? And this is why I, said I was going to be very careful, because it's a very thin line. You are not careful. You may be legitimizing party vigilantism. Mm -hmm. You may be creating an avenue for, OK, we're going to have our own security. Yeah. We'll have our own strong guys and all that. Uh, you ask yourself, what's the no, difference? But we have heard them say that. Yes. Somebody like John Wood has been very clear about that, that he almost lost his life. And no amount of persuasion will, will convince him yes. that he should not take his own personal security 
you know, yes, the I way he that. wants it. Yeah. Whereas mm. you can have a personal security if they are individuals. Mm. But there's a risk element right. of them transforming into a group. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's the temptation. Mm. And indeed, that is how some of these party vigilante groups started. Mm. Some are party members, friends, they are good, they are strong. Some are retired soldiers or retired policemen. They decide to protect their candidates or their chairman or general secretary. In the process, they congregate. They right. get orders That's to join. Right. Then they began to, to, to form a movement mm -hmm. of a sort. And then their conduct and misconduct. Uh, flies in the face of the law. Mm -hmm. that, that's what we've gone through. Mm -hmm. So I'm very careful there as to how, what kind of proposal I even make okay. because of our history, right. the experience we've gone through. But it doesn't stop us from finding in intelligent and creative ways in collaboration with the state to see that, look, these things are done. I was reading this document. Um, it comes from uh, a group called, uh, is it the African... Institute for Crime, Policy, and Governance Research. Mm -hmm. And they were doing an analysis of, you know, crime rates, I mean, in terms of murder and robbery. These are two major ones that create public panic and things. Mm. And they did a statistics from 2012 to 2018. Yesterday, I got the police to give me 2012 to 2019. They couldn't give me 2020. But the key point that I, I picked from this document, which was co-authored by Dr. Justice Tankebi and Dr. Kofi Boache, very dated January 2019, very, very important for people to get access to such documents, is that why they give the absolute numbers in terms of the murder and robbery, mm. they came back to see a point that, look, it's not so much the absolute numbers in terms of the statistical understanding, but the hot spots, where do these crimes take place? Mm. And what they call the hot times. Because the police is limited in terms of resource capability. Also in terms of numbers. We all know we are still striving to meet the UN standard, which mm. is supposed to be one for 500, every 500 police personnel. Right. So the point they were making was that in view of the fact that you have limited capability and resources relative to police operations, we should be by now identifying hotspots and hot times, mm. okay? Where and when do these things usually happen? For the elections, they have done so. Okay. They know the hotspots. The police knows the hotspots for the purposes of the elections. Yes, but I'm talking mm. here campaigning, right. which is subset mm -hmm. of the election security architecture. Mm. You see, this classic case, it's difficult. Sometimes it's easier just making theories out of <laughs> such situations, mm. okay? Sometimes it's easy. People like us who come to sit mm. here, it's very easy to make the analysis and let it look as if, look, it is easy to deal with the matter. Why is it fact it is perhaps easier said than done? Because who could have predicted, unless there is a history of robbery on the, where this incident happened? I don't know. If there's a, a history there, that these things do happen here, and maybe late night or midnight or early dawn, then obviously it should be identified as a hot spot. Mm -hmm. And the time, hot time. Okay. So that mobile police patrols, if not static, mm -hmm. could be part of the cure. Right. Okay. But you see, we're talking now of the nation. Mm. Big, let's be honest, territorially, it's a huge assignment, but not impossible. So it perhaps means that it is how we equip our police system, mm. the service. Okay. What Let's, resources do we give to them? Mm. What training do we give to them? What equipment do we give to them? Mm. Uh, it's, it's not easy. It's easy let's, for an analyst. Let's hear like from me. Professor Enin briefly. Um, thank you. Comes yeah. back. Uh -huh. um, Professor Enin, thank you very much for making the time to join us.